Thank you so much for coming to the journaling class around parent trauma. And really that class was created, um, one, as a, it's just another way to acknowledge all of us who have parented really, really hard kids and like, how do we get through it? Um, a lot of times you were in this weird double role where we are trying to keep them alive, especially if you have had a kid that um, has had a lot of, it has a lot of issues. What I mean, maybe it's addiction. Um, any of us who have had kids with mental health issues, sometimes we have kind of two or three of them lined up. We might have a neurodivergent kid. We may have a kid who has addiction. We may have a kid who's angry. We may have lots of things. And that child may have grown up to be an adult. And we have to still process that. So a lot of times as a parent, we're in like this weird double role. And it's hard to be prosperous when you're doing that. The reason that I did the journal class was to remind you that even though you're constantly in a position, especially if that child is still like in the throes of it, that you are constantly in a position of um, having, right, survival, survival of the day, survival of what to do. Sometimes it's overwhelm. There's, there's a million emotions, right? I can have overwhelm. I can have anger. I can have fear. I can have all these things. But it's really hard when you're in that energy to be able to come forward as a loving, healthy person who really wants to help them see the way forward or for me to get my own language around it. So in the class, uh, one of the things that I remind people is that I have these three little lists that you kind of start with. And the three little lists are really confined to this space because a lot of times it is to say, we might get a little wordy or you might not have enough to say. But one of the things that these three little lists does is it helps you understand your own language, your own dialogue. Um, it allows you to find grace. It allows you to find strength. It allows you to just take all of what is happening, your experiences, um, your thoughts, your learning, um, that in, in, and how are we going to turn it into wisdom? Because there, what my kid didn't need is is a parent that was tripping all the time, especially if they were in a position where they were able to reach for help or reach for change. Um, I didn't need to constantly bring this archaic, angry, um, freaked out energy every time. Like what a, nobody wants to sign on for that. So I had to really work out my energy so I could come to the table as a loving, thoughtful, forgiving co-partner in some of the things that maybe they wanted to create. And it's hard to feel creative when you're tapped. So the first list, um, and my, my son, my number one, number one pile of work was my son, Karsten, um, who is lovely as a human being, but was literal awful to raise. And he didn't raise quickly. Right. So sometimes when we have kids that have um, that are hard early on, they also are hard in their 20s and they really might still be hard in their 30s. Um, so so it's really giving I think what that journaling class does around parent trauma it is it acknowledges the role that we have as a parent, but it acknowledges that there's a way forward. And there's a way forward that we can do by ourselves. I don't have to go to group. I don't have to take day off of work. I don't have to do whatever. I can come home and work on my stuff. There's that. And that is, again, aligning so that I can create wisdom, right? And the idea is to look backward, to assess, to do a lot of things. But we have to start first in this one place. And that is, a, the first one is really we write a letter to our child. And it starts out with the same thing. And that is, it is my greatest wish. It is my greatest wish. And then you have to check you. And you have to check you and go, oh, 
what is my greatest wish? And it's not that you will stop doing this. You have to get out of that energy. You have to set that aside. And you must go back into the part of your heart that still sees rainbows, that still sees that beautiful, fun, loving person that, um, that was, right? That, that they came in as, that, that was uncluttered, that there was another version of them that used to be or the parts that are there. So you're going to speak to that part. And if I were going to say this in a different way, I would say you're going to talk to the highest self of that being, not my kid who's always screwing up, right? We're going to really talk to the highest energetic form of that being. And that's, that's who this, this note is for. Dear my beloved person, right? It is my greatest wish for you and your soul. And then really just let it flow. And you're really going to kind of put in the things that you wish them to have gratitude for, or the things that you would like for their soul to be happy. Sometimes I'm wishing, and I've done this on all of our kids. Uh, I just happened to bring up the one that was the hardest. Um, and by the way, he knows he was the hardest. So maybe that's the best win, but they know. But I've done this on all my kids. And I've also done this on myself of, you know, dear me, <laughs> it is my greatest wish. And then you make a wish to that highest, the highest capital S self of that being, whether it be you, whether it be that child um, and that child, whether or not they are living or dead. Um, that it is to say, this is my greatest wish. Because I do believe that they'll hear you. And I do believe that it is a way to empower energetically forward. And so sometimes you'll say things like um, that you can choose the light in your life. Perhaps you can say that you can instead of saying stop doing drugs to say maybe um, maybe you can choose those fun times or those beautiful feelings without being medicated. I wish for you to be able to do that, right? Um, so think about what you think that is deserving. You, your soul is deserving of a better life. Um, maybe, maybe it's that you're ready, right? We're gonna write them just, a sh it doesn't have to be long, and it's actually better if it's not. Um, and really embrace what is possible. Then we go to the number two. Um, so number two in class is really about in this life, then the name of the person gets to. Uh, and again, we don't want too many because this is gonna keep you focused. It's gonna keep you focused right where you gotta be. So when you think about in this life and so in this life my kid gets to and then you start to kind of put it together um and i would always start with love and uh that you get to love openly uh and that you get to be loved that you get to be protected um that you get to be kind you get to receive kindness and and then i will put in a statement under that so if in this life, my child gets to be, or gets to, in this life, my child gets to love openly is the category. They get to be loved. They get to be protected. And protect, did, they get to protect and be protected. They get to be kind and they get to receive kindness. And then under that comes the statement that is like my proclamation in it of you were raised in love. Right. And that's where my proclamation and that at that line right there um, is a one I always put in a different color. Uh, if you notice, it is in red underneath. And that's where my proclamation is coming in, that you get to be loved, but you were raised in love. And that's my proclamation. And this is also where you get to see if your truth is really your truth or if your truth is where you got to fix something. And so if you're getting pushback on that red line of what is your truth, 
Um, and that's what you're putting in there. You're putting in your truth of proclamation. If, if it feels crummy, that's where your work is. And, and that's the gift, right? That's a gift right there. So um, in this life, uh, my next one was, my next one was, in this life, my child gets to say thank you. That they get to uh, hold their tongue if it will speak anger. They get to uh, hold their tongue from resentment and hurt. They get to consider the grace and the kindness that their words can offer. They get the opportunity to say thank you. And so then my proclamation was you were given kind words. Um, so when you're starting to think about what you're going to write in here, you're going to kind of just just pick at them. I, I, another one I wrote on here was for um, that you get to laugh. That in this life, my kid gets to laugh openly. That they get to laugh without a price tag. They get to give to others in a way that's funny. They get to laugh at their own life and the things that happen in that. And then my proclamation is, you are funny. When you are looking at the things that you want, three to five is really about what you're gonna do, right? In this life, person's name gets to. And then you're gonna put in the category, so two word phrase, right? Love openly, say thank you, things like that, two or three, but it's quick. Right. It's, that's the statement part of it. And then you get to kind of identify what that means. And that's usually about two sentences. And then underneath that, in a different color pen, I did mine in red. But you, you write your proclamation. That is your truth. That is the truth that you are saying to that person's highest being, whatever that person is. OK, last piece of paper, um, which is this is actually for you. You're not going to hand it to that person. But it is for you to really think about just from that loving mindset, right? They get to love openly. They get to say thank you. They get to be loved by other people. Um, they get to laugh at their life, right? They get to grow. Uh, whatever it is that you are wishing to their highest self, then we're going to go with that highest self in mind and go, here's 10 things that I think would help to get the, that list, right? In this life, you get to love and be loved, right? Here's the 10 things I think about that. And you may be, and, and we're not going to give it to them, but it is a way for you to put into your mindset, these are things I think would help them, but not really just constantly directing it, you need to do better stuff or I'm tired of this, right? It's really to go, hey, loving universe, here's 10 things that would really help this person. And sometimes that was that they had another voice that they would listen to. Sometimes that would be that they would take an hour to think about kindness. I think they would really benefit from spending time looking at the clouds, right? That they would be able to feel safe in their own body. You know, that 10 things that I think would really help you is any tool that would help you feel safe in your body. Uh, or, you know, I think what would really help you is, is being able to sleep every day. That would be that would be super helpful. And what ends up happening out of this, um, I always put on their hugs, right? Things I would help you think I would help you are hugs that you can give and hugs that you can receive. Right. These are really simple things. And what ends up happening is it gives you um, in your conscious mind, it just gives you more things to think about that are coming from that loving standpoint. And that way you're not stuck when you're tripping and you want to be able to reach into them, but you're maybe in some old energy of I'm tired, I'm angry, this is never changing, I'm really stuck, 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 I'm stuck with them. But to be able to say, oh, let me invite a new way of thought. And, you know, sometimes it's really that simple thing. I remember when I actually um, 
was sitting there. I was, uh, my son was having a breakdown and, um, and I was just rubbing his back and I, I had done this exercise and I had just rubbed his back and I said, I bet you're really tired of having a sleep pattern that's always disturbed. And he was like, oh my gosh, right? And suddenly he could he could be seen without me going, you know, if you got your sleep under control, you wouldn't have this problem, right? I could come in from a judging point, but instead I could come back because I'd done the private work. I'd done the journal part. And, and a lot of times in that journal, I will invite people to rewrite their questions so they can come in with loving intent and stop coming in with judgment. You can't come in from that point. So when I just rubbed his back and I went, gosh, right, I could see it from his perspective, which is if he could make his sleep cycle work, he probably would have done it, but he didn't know how to do it. Gosh, right, I bet it's really difficult to have a sleep cycle that doesn't get under control for you. Yes, it's horrible. Wow, right? And then they can speak their truth. And I'm not arguing about all this other stuff, right? But they can speak their truth because they feel seen. And when they feel seen, they will give information. And then after that exchange has happened, sometimes you can say, oh, do you have any ideas on what makes you sleep well? Not me going, we should do this now. No, but to go, hey, right, keep inviting in the open dialogue. And that's where you can really start entering some healing with that person or child. Gosh, do you know anything that helps you? And, and maybe we can build from that. Maybe you can build from there. Would you like me to help you build from there? Uh, and that's inviting. They have to invite you in because if you've been angry all the time or you're just stuck, they may not trust you. They may not trust that this is a safe place to be with you. So sometimes I just go, is that something that we can do? And if the, if the answer is no, I just accept it. And then maybe in six months when we are here again, maybe that's a better time. So one, um, what I love about that class is these three pieces of paper. Uh, and then that we can kind of talk about journaling and some of the things that people are doing, they're rephrasing, but it's a way, um, It's it, there's a reason it's three hours long because you need all that time. Uh, if I could make it a weekend, I probably would. But again, it's just taking some time and working through that trauma in a way that is that, that can come out as wisdom. Because that is what you as a parent is always wanting. And, and we look at that as the third way, right? So it is to say, how can we move into a shared common existence that's surrounded with love? And, and that's hard to do when everyone is in crisis. So, right, how can we come into a shared common existence that has a language of love? Well, that means that sometimes I have to go back to journal class and, and work on how we can do that. So thank you so much. Um, I sent this to you in advance so that you could think about it. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what you bring to class. Some of you will do it before class. Some of you will do it in class. Um, you may do another version of it in class, but I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy seeing you and it'll give you a chance to be seen. It'll give you a voice and it'll give you a voice that is also out of what I call loving dominion, right? I need to rule with love. And it's hard to do when y'all ain't acting right. So loving dominion, how do we come forward and work on that together? So thanks for coming to class. I'm glad you signed up and I will see you uh, online. And uh, hopefully one day I can see you in person. Bye.